everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Spring Blossom Shawl, which is the shawl that you see here uh, in the photo and as well if you head on over to my blog to the free written crochet pattern at richtexturescrochet.com. You will also find a number of other photos of the finished product. Uh, I'll provide the direct link for you in the description of this video. So we're going to work on this Spring Blossom Shawl. It is a beautiful uh, lacy sort of shawl with uh, made up of single crochet stitches along with these cluster stitches. And I'll try to pull them apart here so you can see them a little bit better on the camera. So it's made up of these cluster stitches and single crochet stitches. The shawl is worked in rows. I'll show you the bottom side of it here. There it is, and uh, it has two uh, very simple edges along the short end of the shawl there, which you can see in the photo. It is made with the Mandela Tweed Stripes by Lion Brand Yarn. It is a worsted weight yarn, so you can use any worsted weight yarn uh, that you choose. I do find that it is the on the lighter side of a worsted or medium weight. Uh, so try and uh, to get the same gauge in that, I would uh, select a lighter weight, uh, number four. Now for this uh, uh, shawl, you're going to need about 1,200 yards or three of the Mandela Stripe cakes. You're also going to need a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And again, in the description for this video, I will have direct links to both of those items to make it easier for you. The finished size of the shawl is about 63 inches by 21 inches. And when we get into the start of it, I will uh, give you the instructions for making your shawl a little bit longer if you'd like. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, while you're here, I invite you to take a look at some of the other patterns I have here on my channel, as well as stitch tutorials. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so now our spring blossom shawl. It is a rectangular shawl. I guess I should have mentioned that right off the bat. But uh, it is a rectangular shawl and the shawl is worked in rows. You're going to start by making your slip knot. And then you're going to work a foundation chain of 226 stitches. If you would like your shawl to be a little bit longer, you're going to want to change the length of your foundation chain, and you're going to want to work a length uh, that is a multiple of eight stitches plus two for that foundation chain. If you're happy with the 64 inches, as I was, then you're going to chain 226 chains using your 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Once you have worked your 226 stitches, you're going to start your row one. And row one is going to be a single crochet in the second chain from your hook, so count in one, two. And then single crochet into each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, you'll have a total of 225 stitches. At the end of row one, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. For the next two rows, so for rows two and three, you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and then single crochet into each stitch all the way across. So you're going to have a total of three rows of single crochet. So for the next two rows, rows two and three, single crochet in each stitch all the way across and then meet me back here. At 
at the end of row three, you are going to chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work the first of our cluster stitch and cluster shell stitch rows. So what you're going to do is you're going to begin this row by working one single crochet into that first chain, into that first stitch. You're then going to skip the next three single crochet stitches, one, two, three, and into that next stitch you're going to work a cluster shell. To work your cluster shell, you're going to work three cluster stitches, and in between those cluster stitches you're going to work a chain three. So to work your cluster stitch you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that specified stitch, so skip three into the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop, yarn over and draw through two. You're going to repeat that two more times into the same stitch, yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, draw a loop, yarn over, draw through two, one more time, yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Once you have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all four loops. That's your first cluster stitch. You're then going to chain three. Now work one more cluster into that same stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Do that two more times. Yarn over, draw through all four loops. That's the second cluster in your shell, so chain three and work one more cluster into the same stitch. Once you've worked your third cluster in the same stitch, that's your cluster shell made. You're then going to skip the next three single crochet stitches, one, two, three, and into that next one, work one shell, or sorry, one cluster stitch. Next, you're going to skip the next three single crochet stitches, and you're going to repeat. So skip three, and now you're going to work a cluster shell into the next stitch. So your cluster shell is your three clusters with a chain three in between each one. So cluster, chain three, cluster. Chain three and cluster. Now when I was working this design, if I found my stitch count was off, it was often because I had missed a cluster in my cluster shell. So always make sure that you have those three clusters in your shell. You're then going to skip three and cluster in the next stitch. So you're going to repeat that all the way across. Skip three stitches, cluster shell, skip three, and cluster. Repeat that all the way across to your final stitch where you will work one uh, you will work one single crochet into your final stitch. So repeat that all the way across. So I've worked across to the end of my row. I have four stitches remaining and I'm going to work one single crochet into that final stitch at the end of my row four, just like so. You're now going to chain six and your chain six will count as a double crochet stitch and a chain three. And you're going to chain six 
and then turn your work. Next, you're going to single crochet into the center cluster of that next cluster shell. So your center cluster is that one right there in the middle up at the top. You're going to single crochet into the top of that cluster shell. Next, chain three. And single crochet into the top of the next cluster. So you're skipping the rest of your cluster shell and into the single cluster, work a single crochet stitch. Chain three, single crochet into the center cluster of your cluster shell, chain three, and single crochet into the top of your cluster. You're going to continue that all the way across and uh, at when you come to the end of your row, you're going to chain three and end with a double crochet into your final stitch. So single crochet, uh, chain three, single crochet in the top of the center cluster of your cluster shell, chain three, and single crochet into the top of the next cluster. Repeat all the way across. Once you come to the end of your row, you've chained three, and you're going to double crochet into the final single crochet there. Next, you're going to chain one and turn your work. For your row six, you're going to work one single crochet into the top of that double crochet stitch, and then work three single crochets into the next chain three space. And single crochet into the top, uh, into the next single crochet stitch. You're now going to repeat that across. Work three single crochets into the next chain three space, and single crochet into the next single crochet stitch. Continue that all the way across. When you come to your starting turning chain, that chain six there at the end, you're going to work three single crochet stitches into that chain space, and then work one final single crochet into the third chain of that starting chain six. And that brings you to the end of your row six. For row seven, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You're now going to work one single crochet stitch into each stitch all the way across. the end of your row seven, you're going to begin a repeat for the rest of the pattern. So for rows eight through to 64, or until your work measures approximately 20 or 21 inches. You're going to continue working this pattern, repeating rows two through to seven. So rows two was the first row of single crochet stitches. So you'll work two more rows of single crochet stitches your row of cluster stitches, the row of chain stitches, and then two more rows of single crochet. So you're going to repeat those rows two to seven uh, until your work measures about 21 inches or until row 64. And then you're going to repeat your row six one more time, which is the single crochets into these uh, chain spaces. And then that brings you to the end of the body of your shawl. At that time, and I'm not going to finish it here on the video, but I'll show you what you're going to do. You're just going to turn your work so that you're working along that short edge. 
and you're going to work a very simple edging and the very simple edging is you're just going to chain one and working across this raw edge you're going to evenly place 75 single crochet stitches all the way across that short raw edge of your shawl. Now 75 single crochets it's not uh, particular if you find that you need to put in more or less single crochet stitches you can along that short edge. Uh, when you come to the end you're just going to chain one and turn and uh, single crochet in each stitch all the way across. You're going to work uh, five rows of your single crochet stitches along each of the short ends of your shawl. And that's just going to give you a simple, solid, sturdy edging to it. At the end, you can fasten off and weave in your ends, and uh, then you can enjoy your spring blossom shawl. That's all there is to it. So thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial on how to work the spring blossom shawl. Uh, be sure to head on over to my blog, grab the written pattern in there for free, richtexturescrochet.com. And of course, don't forget to subscribe here to my YouTube channel and check out some of the other videos. Until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.